Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Empress Ariadne of the Byzantine Empire. And it is a fine looking empire indeed. You can see as we are about to embark upon our grand tour, which will herald the beginning of the glorious reign of Ariadne. And that reign will encompass many things, one of which will be deciding where we will spend our one kingdom level holy war casas belli we only get one and the options there's a few good options bulgaria aglabid or ali are all very good options there and i'm curious to see where you think we should be spending that we won't be going to war right away but it will be something that we need to think about for the future because that's going to be our biggest chance for expansion but in any case that is not important right now right now we need to go off on our off on our grand tour the toll of conquest my brother my father my husband all died in war a peasant is screaming at me across the village square when you commanded and won the battle of al harunia against emir adid of bersakid it was a victory for you but for me it was the day three generations of my family died her anger had turned to tears, and the words she spoke next barely reached my ears. You're no Vasilisa of mine. Who is this woman? Barbara. Looks like her her father, Zacharias, her, her husband, Serapion, and her son, Gabriel, all died. I can't bring them back, but perhaps some gold will help. Cared for a war widow. Uh, I mean... That was a sacrifice I am willing to make. Yeah, I mean, do we just... This, this is an egregious amount of money here. 280, just... I don't think that we can in any way justify giving all that much money to, to one woman. So, you know what? People die in war, and although this is sad... That was something that needed to be done. And this was a war, you know, that was against our religious enemies as well. So uh, that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. Indeed. A sad sacrifice, but it was one that had to be. Despot Leon replaced us again. Hey, interesting. Someone was planning to kill my cousin, Nicarete. That's unfortunate. Dangerous faction. What is this? Oh, the Liberty Faction. Interesting. Yeah, okay. There's a few people in this Liberty Faction, but <laughs> I don't think that they are going to succeed in their plans. We do have a lot of troops and some powerful allies, so I'm not too worried about enemy factions right now. An imposing man is standing on the road ahead of us. I am Eudoxios of Mavrauda. I bested dozens of women in combat. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you sure you want to just be, you know, <laughs> like, shouting that to the rooftops here, Eudoxios? And honestly, all those fights were dull, so here I am on this road looking for someone better than me, someone I can learn from. If you can best me in combat, I will become a valuable and loyal servant. And so on this day, I demand to meet one of you in a fair fight. You might feel less valuable if I win. You know what? We're going to do this. Let's Let's beat this guy up. Uh, because, uh, you know what? Uh, he's just going around beating up women, so, we, you know, let's show him. Uh, let's show him what happens. Yeah, we win the fight handily, so we just beat up on this man. Ooh, interesting. Grand Tour settling in for dinner. I receive a welcome worthy of a basilisa at Duke Thomas's Castron in Thessalonica, and there is little doubt the splendor of my train has made me a great impression. My vassal dutifully receives me with all requisite deference. Thomas explains the planned evening banquet, promising the entertainment and victuals on offer. Well, near the standards of my own court's dinners, well, wow, the court of Constantinople. Duke Thomas assures me that this is this is only the finest food he has to offer. Very well, let us begin. We're gonna lose some stress here. That is nice. Reduce stress level. Oh, wow, yeah, so look at all of this. Uh, we've got this tour continuing on. Life as a basilisa brings all manner of magnificent and fanciful foods to my plate. 
But lately I have grown tired of these same flavors and textures. I desire the truly outrageous, the truly exotic. To one side of me I see candied figs and to the other are boiled vegetables. What if I were to take these two distinct flavors and taste them at once? A worthwhile experiment. Um, no, we are temperate, so I, I could not be so bold. Let us just have the boiled vegetables. Why don't, why don't we? Uh, so there we go. And we are going in with the justice intent here. So there are a few different options, but justice is where we are leaning towards on this tour here. So dinner this evening is a little different from what I'm used to. The cook lackadaisically drops the bowl in front of me and I'm immediately met with the most unworldly aromas I have ever smelled in my life. This dish from the depths of Hades is offensive to all the senses. Some slimy gray substance sits in its pale foamy broth like the untended chamber pot with a single sprig of herb placed atop in a futile effort to make the thing look appetizing. My every instinct compels me to fling the thing out of the nearest window, but Duke Thomas of Thessalonica assures me it is a local delicacy worthy of a basilisa. Ah, uh, down the hatch we gain nauseating meal. Or it's a good meal. Hmm, no, but we are temperate, so we won't let this filth touch our tongue. It would seem Duke Thomas of Thessalonica has decided to put on a performance for my amusement this evening. I sit at the feast table eagerly awaiting my entertainment when Duke Thomas of Thessalonica appears before me in armor. Behold, the mighty Zenobia and I will d deliver the vile... Basilisa Ariadne of the Byzantine Empire to her maker personally. Before I can respond, a wooden sword is placed in my hand. There is no doubt a performance of the time I commanded and won the Battle of Zamunud against Zenobia. I wonder, should I indulge this? What? What is going on? How wonderful. Duke Thomas of Thessalonica becomes our friend. This is an insult. Uh, hmm. You know, we are fickle. So, you know what? I think it's... <laughs> this is interesting, but we are... You know, we are kind of a character who revels in, in our own glory. So, <laughs> I, I, when I was reading this line, I actually thought that he was going to try to murder us or something. Here. Um, but, you know, our fickle nature, let's go. How wonderful. We'll become friends with Duke Thomas. <laughs> that was a weird, weird event. Some very strange entertainment they have here in Thessalonica, but it is, it is what it is. Ah, and now we have a child growing in our womb. Our husband will be proud. This child will be born in the purple, so presumably. So this, this will be the child who will inherit. So very interesting indeed. Our tour has become a more majestic. Very good. Another evening of merriment draws to a close, and I found myself locked in conversation with Poflorios of all people. Before I know it, the room has become silent, save for our conversation, and everyone is hanging on my next word. Though a little awkward, I'm sure I can tell a tale that everyone here will be delighted by. Something tragic or something light. I think that we will try something... Uh, I mean, our character... Hmm. I'd like to increase the, the majesty of the tour. Perhaps we'll try something. Ah, I feel like tragedy is fits more for our character, though. But I do want to get this majestic tour uh, uh, up as, as high as we can. That would be uh, really good. So I've concluded my royal visitation to Thessalonica, and now my pers procession prepares to depart. Duke Thomas... Uh, and his court have all lined up to see me part, and with everyone present, it is time to collect tribute for bestowing him with my presence. It's time for tribute. I make no demands. Hmm. No, of course we have to. Uh, we have to demand some some tribute here. So, and he gave in. So I emerge from my slumber after another peaceful night of staying with the duke. As I regain consciousness, I feel something heavy beside me that wasn't there before. An entire keg of Byzantine Cypriot rests beside me like a lover, sloshing and creaking in its fullness with each slight motion I make. 
The gift is certainly unexpected, but is it really such a pleasant thing to wake up to? Um, you know, what a wonderful way to wake up. Get out of my sight. Uh, you know what? He is our friend. So in this case, I suppose we will accept it because we did have a, a good, a reasonably good time here with the man. So, uh, what a wonderful way to wake up. What is this? My lady. The work on your precious artifact is proceeding well. I make no promises. If I manage to produce a true masterpiece, what idea would you like to guide my hand? To cause more casualties to them, less to us, to better encourage my Heteri to greatness, or to explore, exploit the terrain advantages. Now let's make our knights better. Where does Reach mean that my plans have been interrupted and it is no longer possible for me to pay a royal visit to Thessalia? The shadow of war has been cast over Thessalia, and du Duchess Sophia of Thessaly had, has warned me not to venture there, though it does not spell an end to my tour. It was a great disappointment. Ah, oh, that's well. That's unfortunate. So we have to pass by Thessaly. Several peasants gather, gather around me for stories from my life. I think back on what I could tell them, and two stories jump to mind. One, when my first child, Alexandros, a beautiful boy, was born as a lovely memory. On the other hand, when I press my claim to the Byzantine Empire held by Bosporios is a more awesome tale, likely to inspoil, lo uh, inspire loyalty and fervor. Indeed, let us inspire the County of Varia with this martial, this tale of war, indeed. That's actually a nice little boost there for it. So we shall, we shall continue on. The truth of it, we approach a hamlet where a forlorn woman stands, shackled on a gallows, the throng gathering at its foot. Basilisa, it's the Basilisa, a peasant stumbles through the crowd, crying, Please, my wife is innocent, and these fiends put their sins at others' feet. They pull him away, wailing, No, Philippa, as he is dragged down the street. The official bows sheepishly, Sorry, my lady. Ignore him, the woman is guilty, don't worry about that. I would like to hear the charges, in fact. Well, this is a justice tour. Let us hear these charges. Insight eludes us. Huh? That is unfortunate. So we do not come to determine what the what the full extent of that crime was, but it is what it is. There we go. So things are still going relatively well here. So we've got these, you know, some factions that pop up, but it's nothing real of true concern. Here we are in Nicopolis. They are, the streets are richly decorated, and my vassal Duke Apatios dutifully awaits me. Ah, how I yearn to delight myself in the great activities and joys. I am sure he is prepared, and to show these people the extent of my magnificence. Oh man, we're, we lose so much. We're just going to be at zero stress for this whole trip, hopefully. We are engaged in a cultural festival. Before we get to this, I do want to just pick out our Marshall perk. We're going to go for Sappers, which is good. That's going to make our siege. We're going to be very fast at sieges, which is exactly what I'm hoping for. So, the sounds of flutes and drums is quickly accompanied by a group of dancing guests, all following the music with joyful movements and laughter. A couple sneaks away into an alleyway. Kids jump in a circle. A lonely man struggles to move his hips. I spot two Kapatios among the crowd, and next to him, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Dancing with Duke Hepatios' spouse will cause a stir. Hmm. I could use this opportunity to dance with the locals, or ugh, dancing. Dancing with his spouse will cause a stir. We could seduce Duchess Bia. Hmm. Ah, whatever. This is the, probably the more fun choice here, so let's see. Let's have a a Dutch uh, dance with the Duchess. Uh, she's not impressed by her dancing. <laughs> oh well. Uh, that was funny and, and worth a try, I think, anyways. A scheme at court. He is certain that my courtier Viviana is plotting against Maximus. Let the traitor be known to all. Hmm, Viviana, who are you? The wife of Sabas Castellanos. Huh. Interesting. Well, uh, I suppose we should, I mean, if she's trying to murder her, we should throw, throw her in jail. That is, uh, that is just what must be done here, so. 
Streets hanging with tapestries, ah, the smell of freshly cooked pork. The way Nicopolis shines during this time of the year. But singing, shouting, and revelry, my lady come celebrate with us, says Dukapatias with a welcoming smile. In the square the locals have gathered, they dance amid the pungent aroma of spiced wine and honey fritter. Let's drink some wine. You... The Grand Tour could become more majestic. Oh, well, we shouldn't drink wine, really, should we? Because we are pregnant, so... I don't know if they really knew about that back then. I'm actually not sure. Such a lovely celebration. Um, you know, but we are temperate. You know, we are temperate, so I think that that will win out. So we're going to go with such a lovely celebration. So, yeah, I'm curious if they knew about the effects of drinking while pregnant back in those times. Probably not to the extent that we do now, but... To nurture the relationships between the next generation of rulers is a duty we should not neglect, says my husband. Some of our your more influential vassal, vassals have children that I'm certain Alexandros would benefit from knowing. Agni seems like a girl of good repute. Phyllis would be a good influence. Let's take a look at... These girls here, potentially one of them may... Oh, they're all betrothed, except for some may. Uh, let's see. Agni does seem like a, a, a girl of good repute and... Uh, well, actually, she's probably close. He's closest in age to Tomei, so... There we go. We'll, we'll have him a friendship with somebody who's close to his age. So, here we go. Continuing the cultural festival here in... Where are we? In Nicopolis here. So, and then after that, we're gonna make our way over to Anatolia. I've concluded my royal visitation to Nicopolis, and now my procession prepares to depart. It is time for tribute. Uh, indeed, we shall... We shall demand the tribute, and he gives in. I follow Duke Hippatios as he shows me the way around the festival, and now he announces as we enter the castle grounds what I expect to be a pleasant surprise. I raise my eyebrows when we find a marvelous fountain all in white stone, with a silver pipe and copiously running with clear juice? Some people gather around laughing and throwing coins in the well. Let's all drink together. Drink from the fountain. Uh, it would be a waste not to make a wish. Indeed, let's make a wish. Make a wish in the fountain. So here, now we are heading off and returning once again. We could probably, I wonder if we could add any stops. Uh, I don't think we really need to here. Uh, you have, greetings cousin, you have something that once legitimately belongs to me. What does he want? The prize ring? No, obviously we're not giving you the prize ring. My lady, my beneficiary, Kekore, approaches me with a wide grin, sweat dripping down his forehead, and soot smeared across his face. I've toiled over the forge many days and many nights, but my work is done. Take a look at this Greek counter. Prowess plus 11, number of knights plus 2, knight effectiveness plus 12. This is a, an insane weapon. Let's see if it's better than the Argeus Mace. It's not necessarily, but that is a good weapon. You know what, we'll probably give this to one of our children, like our son, I believe, uh, could could take that because, you know, we're going to have uh, an heir who is born in the purple. So we'll probably pass that along to, to one of our children here. But yeah, that's a good weapon. Education is at an end. Halima has come of age and she is a fairly skilled web weaver here until we meet again, Halima. So oh, the, the grand tour continues here. Let's uh, speed up time a little bit so we can continue on. We're going to have a bit of time here in Philadelphia. Travel, dangerous interest. Every morning since we passed Pagea, my oracle Agapetos leaves his litter and silently glides away from sight. This time I decide to follow his path and find him in a lively chat with the local suffragan Bishop Dion Dionysos. The cer ceremony begins, and the light of the candle illuminates Dionysus, while shadows play against the walls like autumn leaves. Gapatos, I call after this service. What are you doing? My liege, it has just occurred to me that there may be more than one truth. There's s s room for a calm debate here. 
This is nonsense. This is nonsense. Hmm. I mean, this fits for Agapitos. He is somebody who has like great interest in more than more than one religion. But you know, how do we feel about this? Firm convictions, religious vassal opinion. There's certainly room for calm debate. I don't think we have a chance of debating this man. The ceremony was certainly impressive. Broaden horizons. Um, hmm. I would say that, uh, let's see. You know what? The ceremony was certainly impressive. Uh, and we're not like a deeply religious Hellenic person, so we're going to go with that option. Our horizons have been broadened a little bit. And here we have a daughter, and indeed that daughter is born in the purple. And I believe that's going, maybe it won't make her our heir. Very curious how this is going to play out. Uh, we will name her Alexia. We changed our other daughter's names here. Uh, but we may we may change it at some point here. Okay, so looks like our son is still our heir. Interesting. I'm curious why. Maybe if we have a son who's born in the purple, that will change it? I do not know. And I am very curious. We arrive in a small village in Tabala to see quite a commotion in the town square. An unfortunate creature is surrounded by furious villagers, and the bleak, hopeless look in his eyes fades and brightens as he notices my procession's approach. My Basilisa, these villagers say my actions against them have made a sinner of me. But it is all lies, won't you give me the Basilisa's justice? True, the evidence seems circumstantial, but a lowly peasant should never speak to their Basilisa unprompted. Serving me will be his punishment. Who is this man? Siegfried von Dachau is a strong uh, Bavarian man. Indeed, a very strong Bavarian man who uh, will serve in our court. And that is the just, uh, that is the just option here. Why is he wearing, why is he wearing a crown? Who, where'd you get that crown from, from my friend? In any case probably going to serve us as a knight or something of of that ilk settling in for dinner ah yes this is our brother here i receive a work welcome worthy of a basilisa at the gates of prince eudokios's castron and lydia and there is little doubt the splendor of my train has made a great impression it's good to see my brother we embrace formally embrace publicly marking the bonds of family eh, you know we we relatively get along now Eudoxios, Eudoxios explains the plan to banquet and assures me that this is only the finest food he has to offer. Let us begin. Let us see what kind of feast our brother shall treat us to here. We're almost at level three of our tour. So this evening I'm seated next to Prince Eudoxios's courtier Petronia. Uh, watching as she sighs into her plate with longing. Truly, I grow tired of life here in Lydia and long to elevate my station in life. My talents are wasted here. And lately, I've been s thinking of slipping off with you back to Byzantium, where I can really show you what I'm worth. Her laments seem genuine, but can I really steal from uh, my brother's court? Who is this woman? Eh, she doesn't have amazing traits or, or anything like that. She's from the House of Zerbos. Horse, come with me. Hmm. We could get a strong loyalty hook. I can be a shoulder to cry on at least. Know your place, sycophant. No, I suppose we can bring her bring her with us. We gain that strong loyalty hook on her. So there we go. And let us continue. There we are at level three. So that is good. I would like to get to level four if we can, because then we get an itinerant liege for 20 years. Yeah, so hopefully we'll have enough opportunities to do so. That would be... I think we should be okay. We've got a few more places to, to check out before we get on home, so... I have concluded my royal visitation to Lydia, and now the procession prepares to depart. Indeed, it is time for tribute. Let us see what our brother brings us. It seems I'm not the only honored guest of Prince Eudoxios of Thrace's court. This evening, I have been seated beside the fascinating Kerr. 
and our conversation has left me feeling most elated. None understand the world and scriptures like I do, magnanimous Vasilisa. If you'd have me, I'd be honored to lend you my skills at your court. It is rare that one finds such a fascinating person without a home of their own, but is there room at my court for him? I mean, oh yeah, look at this guy. Novice physician, he's good. He's got really, he's really good character. Now let's have him join our courts. Excellent. And now we shall presumably depart. Goodbye, brother. Well, you know, we And he likes us a little bit better now, so that is good. We had to honor our brother by return, you know, at least showing up there. You over there, I hear a distant cry around to find a plow holding peasant, his breath heavily agitated as he stops for a second. I'm sorry, my lady, but rare is the chance I have to talk to you. I understand you must grow your realm, but the royal buildings that you have built here have left us without a job. He clutches his plow. Come work in my lands. Uh, I shall give you what was taken from you. This, this is heavy in my heart. Take this gold. The realm always comes first. Um, County of Byzantium gains peasant influx, development growth. You know what? Come to come to Constantinople. Indeed, come to Constantinople. There's plenty of work here for for my people. So now we are going to arrive, I believe, in Laconia. Indeed, in Anatolicon. And here we have Despot Gerasimos. Uh, they, his streets are richly decorated, and we will be having a cultural festival. Oh, and we gained a stewardship lifestyle perk. Excellent. What do we do with that? Golden obligations? Probably collect taxes effectiveness. 25%. Oh, what's going to get us more money? How many hooks do we have, even? Let's check. Hooks and secrets. Uh, hooks we hold. We hold 12? We hold 12 hooks? We can get probably quite a minute. I mean, a lot of these are on family members and, and things like that. And probably people who don't really have much money. But hmm, yeah, a lot of these are just our children. We're pretty young. Collect taxes effectiveness uh, for 25% in the as the Empress is probably going to provide some significant 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 money here once we switch over to that we are converting some Greek counties but uh, we can switch over once we do that the streets of Laconia are richly decorated oh yeah let's start so let us let us see what this cultural festival has for us and let's see if we can get to that level four of a majesty. Look at that I hear as I walk down the streets of Laconia. My courtier, Romilia, is pointing at what seems to be known as St. Matthew's Smith's Guild. A smile quickly appears on her face, blissful. A group of apprentices are kneeled down in front of a workbench. The master supervises the craft from the lintel of the door, arms crossed, chin up. You'll need a bit more strength for that, son. Romilia takes a step in their direction, completely mesmerized. Hmm, these people are worth helping. We should invest in merchants back home as well. We could gain city buildings, construction cost minus 20. That's pretty nice. Go ahead, Romilia, pay them a visit. She could become an architect, but I think, let's see, these people are worth helping. Uh, I think we should invest in the merchants back home, indeed. Solace in the script. Uh, somebody has a... Piece, a piece of poetry for us, Countess Slavomira. Uh, very well, let us read the poem. Pangs of morning, when such beautiful countenance is hid from sight, those left behind must feel it a blight, alone, bereft, without that sweet woman, our hearts, our minds, our souls all damned. So far, I've kept my thoughts to myself. I don't know how I... You know what? Is this heartfelt? Perhaps it is. I don't know. Hmm... I think this is probably a heartfelt poem, we shall say. It's truly lauded, indeed. Let's continue on with this wonderful cultural festival, this Anatolian cultural festival here. Somebody wants to pay a ransom. Hmm. I don't even know who this man is. Oh, he's from the, from the Swedish royal house, though, so we'll, we'll offer him back. I cannot but leave my eyes a... As Bodvar begins gesturing towards Despot Gerasmos, 
but is considered highly offensive in Greek culture. The despot shouts and calls Bodvar explicit names while his men hold him back. It seems like he is not going to come down on his own. I have to do something to ease the tension. I should berate Bodvar publicly. May I offer gold and compensation? Hold on, it's just a misunderstanding. Who is this man, Bodvar? He's just a guest. Uh, but he is a Varangian. But you know what? Maybe I can... I feel like we should probably berate him publicly. You know what? You can't... Some Varangian soldier can't insult the despot of Anatolia. Revelry, joy. As I enter Laconia's main square, I see a group of figures dressed as priests, singing and dancing. In its center, a half-flamen, half-jester man presiding over the crowd. Despot Gerasimos makes an appearance, clapping his hands in joy. Now listen, friends, as Sammy is now our bishop of fools, and his will is law, and his voice is the voice of the Lord. What kind of sinful joy can we expect from him? Hmm. Feast of Fools. What would this what would this give us here? Feast of Fools. Popular opinion. Hmm. Such blasphemous festivity has no place in my realm. Um You know what? This is this is Anatolian culture. Why not see? We are fickle after all. Our son has learned the Arabic language. Good for him. Let's have you study another language. Uh perhaps you can learn uh the Serbo-Croatian language. Could be useful. So let us let us continue here. Hopefully we're so close to to level four here. I think we should get it if we if we demand our host to give us something here. The sky above Laconia is clouded, and the gray streamers of the night start to wander around the narrow alleys. Despot Drasmos hold hold rises at the top of the hill almost to find. He could use a reminder of who he serves. I am Basilisa by divine right. The crown hangs over my head like the moon above all the other stars. No matter how brightly you shine, I prevail. Gerasimos shall renew his homage to me. Or let's just celebrate a humble liege. Are we humble? We are not humble. We are ambitious. I've concluded my royal visitation of L Laconia, and now my procession prepares to depart. His court have all lined up. It is time for tribute. And he gives in. Very good. Count Hectorios invites me to join a military parade. He assures me that Despot Gerasimos watched over the preparations to give me the best parade the county of Laconia has could offer. As he speaks, few soldiers, a few soldiers spar with each other. It seems like it's all I will see today, which is a pity because it bored me already. I would rather watch a horse eat grass than spend a minute longer watching this. I'm not sure how desperate Gerasimos of Anatolicon thought this was a good idea. I could learn a thing or two from him. Actually, I would rather see a military parade. Hmm. Let's see. I think that we should probably... Inspired by a military parade. You know what? Let's, let's be inspired by this military parade. Every candle in the room burns furiously to keep the darkness outside. A migrant draft comes... And goes through the stone cracks. A desperate Gerasmos is kneeling in front of me, and I reach out for his hands, taking them in mind. My friend, I, I start and tighten my grip. You give your hands into my hands in the place of our hearts. I think highly of your fidelity, and as such, I demand your gold, your men, your loyalty, or friendship. You glow closer to forming his friendship with him. Hmm, loyalty. We could get a strong hook on him, and his feudal contract can no longer be negotiated. Um, oops. Ah, accidentally clicked on that. We asked for his friendship. I was going to go loyalty, but whatever. It is what it is. So let's see. Will we actually be able to get this fourth level here uh, before the end of this? While his numerous attempts to curry favor have not gone unnoticed, I cannot help but feel irritated by Count Tomas' sudden interest in me. Why can he not leave me in peace? I never want to see it. Nah, let's just make him go away. Will we get another event to potentially get this last little bit? It seems like we're we're very close. We're at 99. That seems unfair if we don't get it. But in any case, it is it is what 
what has happened so far. Ah, we still have one more. All right, very good. We arrived at uh, Duchess Eudokia's Castron in Sabastea, and we are taking a tour of her grounds. Very well, this is all excellent. She has, uh, and Sabastea is a, so fair and fine a land that merely gazing on her towns and fields will be entertainment enough. Excellent. Let us continue along these grounds and visit the, you know, eastern part of our empire. Duchess Eudokia has been quite the gracious host so far, showing me her lands and possessions with pride. So I'm immediately taken aback when she starts stammering and clearly trying to draw my attention away from an apparently unremarkable door that we are passing by. Are you hiding something from me, Eudokia? I take advantage of her moment of stunned, shameful, guilty, silence to push the door open, and I'm surprised by what I find. A deposit of food, gold pieces, and general goods. It's only fair to share with your Basilisa. Uh, I'll pretend I didn't see this. You know what? Let's get ourselves a wee cook on the Duchess. Indeed. Ah, uh, well, you know what? We are just, so... I probably should have picked the other option, but we're fickle, so... You know what? Sometimes uh, justice doesn't win out with our character. Ah, and now our daughter has become our player heir. Indeed, I wonder if... Yeah, okay, so very interesting. It took a little while for that to sink in, but... Greetings, my sensible liege. Peace be with you. I have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand I have subjects of my own too. My current contract is very restrictive. Uh, she's going to use her hook on me to lower her taxes. Ouch. After all we did for her. But luckily, our tour has hit in level four majesty success. Staying with vassals and having a change of scenery has been nice, but the constantly changing layouts become increasingly confusing. When left to my own devices, I rarely know where to look for commonplace necessities, like where I might find a midnight snack. Haphazardly bungling through Duchess Eudokia's Kestron, I open a chance opening a door only to find Eudokia and her duke standing, and her husband, I presume, standing precariously close, seemingly on the brink of something intimate. Candles softly light the room, and the sweet smell of lavender fills the air. My vassal betrays a wry smile and beckons me closer. The temptations are too great. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'll not soil myself in such filth. Uh, you know what? If we were a lustful character, I think that we would maybe, you know, be uh, enticed by this offer, but we are not a lustful character, so I don't think that we will... Uh, I think that we'll pass on their invitation, but uh, such, such is... Uh, such is our character here. Very interesting uh, little, little event there. Oh, and Leon has died of smallpox. Test but Leon. Wow, this poor guy. I mean, he has leprosy, he was disfigured, and he got smallpox. That's a rough life. Well, now the new despot of Magna Gratia is Despot Sabas, who is a club-footed and one-legged, so... We don't know. Uh, presumably, it was his good leg that was was lost. So that's pretty rough for him. But you know what? He is our vassal. So such is as it is. We do need a new spy master, and we're going to probably put. Uh, do we put? No, I think we got to put Duke, the Duke of Armaniac. He's just too good. He's thirty intrigue. I've concluded my royal visitation. It is time for tribute. We know that she has the money for it, so. Having just exited the tavern recommended by the Duchess, I find myself outside in the shady alleyway. Out of the darkness, a strange sound emerges. As I quietly move towards it, curious as to its origin, I catch a glimpse of Epiphania. What is she doing out here in the murky alleyway at this hour? I fruitlessly try to get a view better view of what she is up to without making my presence known. But one thing is certain, and that Epiphania is up to no good. Oh, what are you up to? If I could just inch closer. Let's try it. We have learned her secret. She has a lover. Who is her lover? Oh, it is Methodios Komnenos. Interesting. 
My procession continues down our planned route to Byzantium when suddenly we come to an abrupt stop on Alexander's command. Stop, you fools. It is said that this road is infested with bandits and scoundrels of low character. We must divert. The road he proposes is longer, but assures me it is safer. We must deliver justice to these low lives. Indeed. Let us go and just let's go and defeat these bandits. The bandits have us routed. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. They they managed to route the, the soldiers we sent to with Alexander to defeat them. That's a that's unfortunate. Uh traveling through the muddy streets of Tabia, people are a rare sight. Empty houses derelict. The child plays with the dog in silence and hides away when he sees our entourage. A local priest joins points at the Lord's home and we follow. My admired Basilisa Ariadne, Despa Gerasmus, welcome, welcomes us in a dusty hallway. It's a big honor to have you visit our humble domain. If you would like, please stay for the night and join us for supper. I guess this is on our way back. I'll gladly accept your invite or... Yeah, I think we will accept his invite. Very well. Stop on the way, the banquet. The oil lamps cast a light so feeble that it's nearly imperceptible. An old servant serves us food, fish, unspiced. Despa Gerasimo seems a bit nervous, talking about the difficulties of ruling such a poor area, the impossible taxation. The last priest we had left just after a couple months. He, so this is interesting, you know, he, he really showed up with, like, he put all of his money into the first, but then, like, first uh, bit visit of the tour. But on the way back, you know, we get to actually see a little bit under the hood, so to speak, so... The last priest we had left after a couple of months. He breaks into a crying mess immediately after burying his face in my in his hands. I must be honest with you. My intention in inviting you here was to steal from you, dear lady. I hope you can forgive me. Was he the one who sent those bandits after this? Here, have this and don't... Oh my gosh, now you shall pay for this? My guards will have a chat with you. What would happen here? Hmm... Now you shall pay for this. Let's see. Let's forget this all. Well, I mean, we are just. Here, have this and don't ever steal again. Hmm. Generous donations. Ugh, I don't really like this option here. Oh, well, actually, we imprison him. But this is an act of tyranny? How is this an act of tyranny? And we gain 50 stress because... Well, I guess it's because he didn't actually do anything. All right, well, we're going to make him pay for it, at least. That seems like the most just option, but... Huh. Very interesting. You know, we got to see two sides of the man there. Curious indeed. Lots of stuff going on here, but, you know, not really too concerned. We're just, we're just here for the grand tour, are we not? The ugly statue. I was warned ahead of time that the villagers of Perusius at Hippium have come together and erected a statue of me. When I arrive to look at it, though, I cannot really process what I'm seeing. Not only is the statue the ugliest thing I've ever seen, but it looks nothing like me. Glancing around, I only see proud faces beaming up at me. Does no one else see how bad it is? This oh, sh ah, I didn't even look at that. <laughs> I keep accidentally clicking, uh, clicking options here before, uh beforehand i'm a little trigger a little trigger happy it seems in any case the grand tour has come to an end every county within eudokia's realm county control level increased by 10 Bar basilisa ariadne the honorable gains magnificent liege for 20 years wow vassal tax contribution plus 20 percent and development growth in the realm capital plus 0.3 per month that's really good we gain 1200 prestige We've gained 300 renown. Every vassal visited vassal gains better opinion of us. Knight of the Bull gains glory. Most expert of the Vasilisa's galleons gains 25 glory. And the Flame of Crete gains 25 glory as well. Finish the Grand Tour. So there we go. We have finally returned back to Constantinople. A much greater Vasilisa than we were before and now we will have much to consider in the future here but that will all be in another episode until then thank you for watching